You, yeah, I'm talking to you. Do you want more Chicago Bulls YouTube videos in your life? I know you freaking do. Well, if you guys want more videos here by us from the Bulls Report by Chat Sports, I need you guys to hit that subscribe button. Lock us in because it's simple here. It's a simple equation. More subs equals more videos. So lock us in for your go-to Chicago Bulls YouTube channel, and let's get into today's show. Coming up on today's edition of the Bulls Report by Chat Sports, we're going to be diving into a recent article that The Athletic dropped where Mark Eversley, our GM, had a sit-down interview and he just kind of talked about the Bulls offseason, the Bulls roster, and just the past couple of seasons uh, with his time in Chicago. My name is Patrick Seatman. Welcome into the Bulls Report. And the first thing that GM Mark Eversley talked about was the overall Lonzo Ball impact. You know, I think if we had to circle one move that has impacted the Chicago Bulls over the past couple of seasons the most, it has to be the Lonzo Ball injury. This is what actually what GM Mark Eversley had to say on the Lonzo Ball injury and just the overall challenge that it did present the Bulls, you know, both on and off the court. He says, I think it's presented challenges on both sides. On the court, is what we're more focused on a daily basis. He's just a unique player, and he was terrific to compliment Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Vooch as we envisioned this roster. And I totally agree. Like, the Bulls were humming during that 2021-2022 season. The first 35 games that Lonzo Ball played, the Bulls were actually the number one seed in the entire Eastern Conference. Like, we forget that with this group, with Levine, DeRozan, Vooch, and Lonzo, they were the best team in the East. And then, obviously, Lonzo Ball goes down in the whole direction of that season change where the Bulls ended up being the eighth seed in the East and they end up losing in five games to the Milwaukee Bucks. But he also mentioned about replacing Lonzo because we do know the Bulls had a need at that point guard position. And the Bulls went out and got a guy like Javon Carter this year. And this is what he said. I think by going out and getting Javon Carter, not as a replacement for Lonzo, but as an enhancement. Because the guy who I'm really encouraged about from how he ended the season and what he's done this summer and what I envisioned of him and how good he can be going forward for this group is Kobe White. Kobe's development on the court has been terrific. His development off the court has been equally as impressive. He's found his voice. He'll challenge guys in the room. He'll be more decisive and assertive, and we need that from him. But I think it takes time. I think this is incredibly interesting because we've talked about that starting point guard battle. Who's going to be running that number one spot for the Bulls this next season and who will be that Lonzo Ball replacement. I've been more in the camp that it will be Javon Carter, but it seems like Mark Eversley could be in the camp of having Kobe White be that true point guard for this team. And I also agree with what he said. I have loved the way Kobe White has developed. I think his max potential in this league is that scoring combo guard role similar to a Tyrese Maxey. Maybe his max potential could be a guy like Jamal Murray. Obviously, it's going to take a lot for him to get to that kind of play style and archetype of player, but we'll see. So keep your eyes out on who's going to be starting at the one spot for the Bulls this upcoming season. I think it's going to be Javon Carter, but I'll ask you guys, pick a starting point guard for the Bulls next season. Give me a JC for Javon Carter or give me a CW for Kobe White. This is going to be the pin comment on today's video. So if YouTube hits an ad break your way, sit back, let it play, and let me know your thoughts on who will be the starting point guard for the Bulls next season. The second thing that Mark Eversley talked about during this little sit-down interview with The Athletic was about the Bulls player development because they have definitely been kind of under scrutiny over the past couple of years of maybe not developing guys like Patrick Williams, Kobe White, Io DeSumo, and Mark Eversley actually had a comment about that. He said, I think you look at what we've done with Io, that's a win. And I'll probably have to agree with that. Io DeSumo being a second-round pick, I think the Bulls have developed him nicely. I think Kobe White, is a win. I actually do disagree with that. You took Kobe White in the top 10. I don't think he's lived up to a top 10 player, but whatever. But this is what was so interesting to me. I think Patrick Williams, we will see this year. I think this is going to be a really, really big year for Patrick Williams. And I totally agree with what he's saying. You know, Patrick Williams, he took him with the fourth overall selection in the 2019 draft. 
he just hasn't lived up to that. You know, he's played three seasons of the league. He had one of those uh, which was kind of uh, st stunted by injury or cut short by injury, and this is a big year for P-Dub. You know, he had the efficiency. The efficiency for him has always been there. He's over 48% from the field. He's over 40% from the three-point line. I think for him, it's going to see if he can up his usage rate and up his shots per game Will the efficiency follow? So this is a big-time year for Patrick Williams. I think if the Bulls want to reach their max potential as a unit, P-Dub needs to be your second or third leading scorer because we know what he brings defensively. But I want to see Patrick Williams go from just a solid role player in the league. Screw it. Let's go make that all-star jump this year for my man P-Dub. Now, number three, he just talked about the Bulls offseason as a whole and just certain moves that the Bulls made. And I'll tell you what, guys, I... Uh, I totally disagree with what he said. Somebody asked him what was the biggest move that the Bulls made this offseason, and, you know, we could just throw it on screen right now, Chip. This is what he said. He was talking about the biggest move the Bulls made, and he said it was re-signing Nikola Vucevic. I just can't believe that. But he said this. He said, I'm excited for Vooch. There's not many starting centers in the NBA, so if Vooch were to go away, how would you replace him? Okay, and then he said those options were just not appealing to us, so retaining him became the number one goal this offseason. And listen, I don't really get this overall. Like, I sort of understand, like, yes, it would be hard to replace, you know, Nikola Vucevic just because of, uh, you know, like he said, there aren't, or, or there aren't a lot of centers on the open market that could step in and play that starting role, but also you signed him for a three-year, $60 million deal. Like, I think Nikola Vucevic, I think he's just a stat sheet stuffer. He doesn't really bring it defensively. He gets eaten alive in pick and roll situations. And really offensively, I love the stretch five ability. I love that he's been able to step out and knock down a three, and he's still a guy you can throw the ball to in the low block, and he can go make a move. But overall, I just don't understand this. I don't know how you could possibly say your number one goal heading into this offseason. After you just missed the freaking playoffs with this same unit, your number one goal was re-signing your center. That's just a really mind-boggling thing to me. But this might also uh, you know, throw you guys for a loop as well. The fourth thing he talked about was Billy Donovan. We do know Billy Donovan got extended last summer, uh, but we don't know the certain amount of years he was extended. And he's just talked about how Billy's done throughout his tenure with the Bulls. And I totally disagree with what he said. This is what GM ME had to say. He said, Billy's been terrific. Billy's been terrific from day one. Yes, that is how he started this. And I see no reason to believe that will change. He continues to communicate with our players. He's, communic he's communicative sorry, with our tourists and I daily, weekly, whatever is going on. I think he's an excellent head coach. One of the things that brings us great comfort is the way he communicates with our players. Everybody understands their role, everybody knows what's expected of them, and he continues to have conversations with those guys to ensure that there are no gaps. When you have a head coach who does that for you on a daily, daily basis, it brings you comfort. And I think the jury is still out on Billy D. Like, I think, like, yes, in terms of being a professional, in terms of, uh, you know, as being a leader for the Bulls, I think he really does do a great, great job. But in terms of player development, in terms of getting the most out of his roster, I definitely think the jury is still out on him. Because if we forget, Billy Donovan, he had one of the most talented rosters in NBA history and couldn't get them to an NBA championship when he was back in with the Oklahoma City Thunder. We had James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and Kevin Durant. They made a finals, but they were never able to get over that hump. And I can make an argument. The Bulls, no doubt, roster-wise, over the last three seasons, have had a top-eight roster in the Eastern Conference, and the Bulls only made the playoffs one of those three years. So I think the jury is still out on Billy D. I do agree with what Mark Eversley is saying. He's an adult. He is a very mature, mature coach, and he's great at communicating with his players. But will it turn, it turn into wins in the wins and loss column? That's where I think the jury is still out. But I want you guys to grade Billy Donovan as a head coach. Back to school. Get out those red pens. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F on Billy Donovan's performance as a head coach for the Chicago Bulls. I'd probably have to give him a C. I think it's just been completely average. Just right down the middle, C for Billy Donovan. But also let me know your thoughts as well. As always, guys, you guys can give me a follow on Twitter for more Chicago Bulls news and rumors throughout this offseason leading up 
to the NBA season. I'll be tweeting out highlights of the Bulls as well. So give me a follow at Pat Seeps is the handle. I'll make sure to put that link for you guys in the comment section and the description of today's show. And as always, we'll see you guys next time. Go Bulls.